So last time we talked about this uh, idea of experiments and outcomes, and today we're going to put another piece of terminology in place, which is called events. Okay, so basically, an event is nothing more than a set of outcomes, meaning that um, it's a subset of the sample space. So for example, last time we talked about rolling a die and recording the number that you got, right? So that sample space was 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Those are my possible outcomes. And an event is usually something that I can describe in words, right? I can say something like, um, you know, I rolled an even number. And so that's going to correspond to a subset of the possible outcomes, 2, 4, or 6. So when I have a discrete sample space and a finite number of outcomes, I could actually enumerate, that is, I could list all the possible uh, events that I could see. Okay, um, And of course, this gets to be actually pretty unwieldy doing it by hand. Um, so let's do a simple example where let's suppose that um, you know the sample space was just one, two, three. Okay, um, so now I'm going to ask, what are all the possible events that I could get? So I could get um, the null space, the null event. So this is basically something that says um, none of these outcomes happened. We know that that's not something that actually can occur. One of them has to happen, right? Then we have the set of um, events composed of one outcome each, right? Or I could have events that are composed of exactly two of the outcomes, or I could have the event that's composed of uh, exactly three of the outcomes, okay? And so I can see here I had three possible outcomes, and then I had eight possible events. And so sometimes you hear this called the power set. Uh, and the reason it's called that is that, you know, in some sense I had three events and I have, or sorry, I have three outcomes and I have eight uh, events and two to the third power is eight. So it's kind of like related to, to taking an exponent of something. Okay. Now, of course, when I have um, continuous sample space or I have um, an infinite number of outcomes, that's not really possible to list all these possible events. But the whole point of making a systematic definition of probability is to be able to assign kind of sensible probabilities to each of these possible events, right? So for example, looking ahead, we know that this null event has probability zero, right? I know that something has to happen. And kind of conversely, you know, this is like saying, you know, one of these things has to happen, so the probability of this event has to be one. And then we have to think about how do we define you know, consistent probabilities for all these middle events in such a way that they all kind of make sense. Okay, So oftentimes, um, you know, an event is something that you can describe in words, right? Something like, you know, what's the probability that my hard drive lasted more than five years? Or what's the probability that the number that you picked and the number that I picked are within, you know, 0 0.01 of each other? So these events kind of carve out swaths of the sample space, and we're going to assign probabilities to them. Okay, So in order to kind of um, go forward, since these events are basically subsets of the sample space, it's useful to kind of revisit some set theory basics. Okay, So these are things that probably are familiar to you from, I don't know, um, maybe middle school. But just to review what we have. So set theory is basically saying, OK, you know, I have my set of all possible uh, outcomes. This is the sample space, right? And now I have an event. Let's call it A. And then I have an outcome, right? So here, S is the sample space. A is some event. And then x is some outcome within the event. And so I can say that you know here, x is a member of A. right? That little e notation is, is a member. Whereas if I have some outcome that's not inside the event, I would say that y is not a member of A. Okay. If I have 
um, two events, say I have event B and event A, here I would say that A is a subset of B. Okay, um, it's, it's inside B. Then we have kind of like our old friends uh, intersection and union, right? So if I have two events here, event A and event B, this middle ground here where they intersect is what we call A intersect B. And then I have um, two events A and B, and I look at all the outcomes that are in either event. That is A union B. And then I have two events A and B, and I ask about the stuff that is in A that is not also in B. This is what I would call the set difference A minus B. And finally, we can talk about, I guess, uh, put it on a different piece of paper, we can talk about um, an event A, and then I can ask for all the stuff that is not in A. Right, so here this is called a complement, which we denote with this little c as a superscript. Okay, so if you remember all these basic set theory notations, you'll be pretty well set for all the stuff we talk about next. And then um, we'll talk about that stuff next time. See you next time.